From the far reaches of space to the darkest places on Earth, join us as we explore the haunted, the cryptid, the creepy, and more. Exposing Reality Radio presents the Spectral Wolf Pack Show, your paranormal nightmare, with your host, Alexander Bobolinsky. <laughs> What is up, Wolfpack? We are here live on this fine Wednesday night. And uh, in case anyone missed last week's show, we had Lyle Blackburn on talking about uh, Boggy Creek, Monster, Lizard Man, things like that. And tonight we're going to get back into the paranormal with an awesome guest. Uh, Darren Evans is a paranormal researcher from Tulsa, Oklahoma, whose experiences and research led to what has been became known as the Zozo Phenomenon. Evans has been featured on television and film in connection with the Ouija board research. And Darren, what's up, man? Hey, how's it going, bro? It's going great, man. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, been, I, I just got back from Florida and had not a great trip, but I've been looking forward to this all week. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too, man. So uh, I haven't done an interview in a while, so it's uh it's good to you know uh talk about things and uh you know it's pretty controversial yeah and uh you know it's, everybody's got an opinion and it's not my job to uh, force any you know my beliefs down anybody's throats but i do have an opinion and uh i i do give it so and with this kind of stuff crazy. like our experiences you know that that always defines my opinions the most. I would say is like my personal experiences, and but I love that's why I do this show because I love hearing everyone's theories and opinions and experiences. Yeah, experiences is what makes it happen. It's what makes you believe. Yeah, and you know it's you know, but everybody's a skeptic until they have an experience, and then they're like, "What the f?" You mm-hmm. know, uh, it forces you to change. Uh, your belief system with, when you have these experiences and not everybody believes the ones that I had uh, and that's fine but uh, when you begin to have thousands of other people have similar experiences then you got to step back and say okay what's really going on here yeah definitely that's a so so tell us a little bit first about how you got into the paranormal and everything how I got into the paranormal um I think it was 1982. I was in high school, and I come from a pretty religious family. My grandmother was a, a Pentecostal priest, and you know I was kind of rebellious, and I, I uh, started dating a girl who would later become my wife. We lived next to the Arkansas River. My, uh, my grandma's house, you know, was right along the banks of the Arkansas River, and so I met a. Uh, uh, a young lady at the age of 13 who was uh, like my first serious girlfriend. We started dating, and there was a strange Ouija board found underneath her house. Wow. And it was strange in just the way it looked. A plumber had found it going underneath the house. It was double-sided. On one side was a standard uh, Ouija board of uh, a William Fold uh, large board, but it was the other side that was just very menacing looking and it had the strange word zo zo inscribed on it with strange symbols and uh i become fascinated with that board there was something about it yeah and the girl i was dating her mom was you know she was wiccan and she believed in all that kind of stuff and i don't know if that board was something she had uh, stashed in the house. She never admitted to uh, ever knowing, you know, and it had been there a long time, and it was also surrounded by jars of preserved blackbirds, hmm. which I thought was pretty strange. Very and then uh, I didn't know until 20 years later when I began some serious research on what would become known as the Zozo phenomenon did I find out that in the ancient Bosque language, Zozo actually means crow or blackbird. Wow. So I thought that was kind of kind of ironic. Yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Wow. 
so that kind of got a uh, that kind of sparked your interest in and in finding that board and everything and then over the years you just continued doing uh doing the research and everything yeah i had some very strange experiences on these boards yeah on that particular board especially and you know the weird thing about that is i'll never forget some of the first sessions that i didn't really know what, what to do uh we would ask it a question the planchette would would scoot quickly off the board mm-hmm. and then with great you know precision knock the board if we were using the regular side it would knock the board off the table and it would often land, you know, Zozo side up. Wow. And it was like its way of telling us to get on the other side. And it actually would spell get on the other side. And I, I just found that really weird at the time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, and we watched a door open all by itself. And it had a crazy, a really thick shag 70s style carpet. And this was back in the mid 80s. And no one, I mean, you could barely open this door with your, you know, if you pulled on it as hard as you could. Yeah because it had that tall carpet and it was just hard for the door to open. Well, we watched that door open all by itself. And that was, you know, it was just crazy. Uh, the, the house was already rumored to be haunted by a spirit that, uh, my ex father in law called George. Mm-hmm. And, uh, George would, would sometimes come through on the board. And then later, uh, after much, you know, weird conversation and communication on the board, he would then reveal, that it was Zozo. And so that's how my, you know, my connection with it began, you know, back in 83, 82, I can't remember the exact year, but it was, it was, it was either 82 or 83. Wow. And I was 13 years old at the time. Wow. And it always is so weird. I swear the communication that comes through on the board is always so strange. Uh, Specifically when I start, when the Zozo stuff starts happening, like, before that happens, like you said, I might be communi- thinking I'm communicating with someone else or something else, and then that stuff will start, the Z-O, Z-O. Um, so, do you still have that board? No, I do not. Uh, that board was freaky, man. And the, the way, the way you know, I, I was, we got caught on it too many times, and we were told by her parents that we had to get rid of the board. Yeah. And, and during that time, we were, we had moved from Tulsa to Jennings, Oklahoma, way out in the forests. Mm-hmm. And was, this place was kind of spooky. It was all by itself. Well, one day I went out wandering around in the forest, and I'd, I'd, I'd run across an abandoned uh, camp of sorts. And I'm like, well, you know what? There's not, I just didn't want to get rid of it. it as, as spooky as it was and the weird shit that was happening, I still didn't want to get rid of the board. I, I become obsessed with it. Yeah. And so I stashed it in the trunk of an abandoned Austin Healey convertible car out in the middle of nowhere. And I figured that would be a safe place to put it. Mm-hmm. And so I put it there. Uh, a couple of weeks went by, and I was just really wondering, you know, I, I had this strange pull to the board. And I went back to that location. And it looked like, you know, maybe an outlaw had left all their stuff out there and got thrown in prison forever and then just lost all his stuff because, I mean, nobody messed with it. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it, was, it was just by accident that I had found this abandoned camp location. Well, I went back a couple of weeks later and it was night and I like to never found the place again, but I did, I did manage to locate it. And I went back to that, uh, abandoned Austin Healy convertible where I put it in the trunk. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go check the board out make sure, you know, my board's okay. And I, man, this, this was weird. Uh, I walked up to the, the, the trunk. It did not have a latch. And so you could open it, but you could close it. It would stay closed. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I, I opened the trunk and suddenly about what looked like 50 rats jumped out of that trunk and were all over me. Oh my God. Yeah. And I run backwards and fell down and I'm pulling rats off me. And, and they're trying to get off. I scared them as much as they scared me, of course. But, uh, it took a lot of courage to walk back up to that vehicle. About 15 minutes went by, and I took a long stick, walked back up to it, and opened it up, and had saw that they had devoured that Ouija board. Oh, my God. It, was, it, it had become a nest for the rats. Uh, yeah. Part of it was used in their, you know, in, their, in their nest in there, and it looked like a lot of it had been, you know, 
it just disappeared. So that was pretty freaky, the demise of that thing, and uh, I'll never forget it. Wow. That uh, kind of reminds me of uh, a story where my friend Eric was at this uh, Benton farmhouse, and he there was, like, this one window that was just covered in, like, flies and bees. Uh, just a similar, like, how, th- like, pests or, I guess, pests can, like, come together and and dealing with the paranormal like after i started doing uh research in like bills above i started seeing flies all over the place even in the winter and it was starting to freak me out uh because he's the lord of the flyers and i don't know just strange strange stuff so what uh so after that uh, did you get a new board, or did you continue playing Ouija board? Um, you know, I, I, I had such an obsession, and, you know, having seen a similar obsession in many people later on in life with Ouija boards, mm-hmm. you know, I there was a period of time when I would move from state to state, you know, I'd always, you know, I'd always find a board, I'd go to thrift stores, I'd just find them everywhere. Yeah. And this thing would come through every time and it always identify its name. Uh, and I call it Mr. Z sometimes cause I still don't like saying the name over and over, you know, yeah. repetitively. So if I say Mr. Z, that's who I'm referring to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, yeah, it come through on, on multiple boards and had some very freaky experiences. Um, one of the freakiest that ever happened to me. And it's in my book called the Zozo Phenomenon. And I called, I call it the window incident. Uh, I was the guy that if you didn't believe in the spirit world, I'd bring a Ouija board to your house. And there wasn't too many times that I wasn't very convincing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the things in the communication, the, the, the things that it would say, well, me and my, uh, my girlfriend who's, whom the board was found in her house. We went to, uh, a friend of mine's house and he believed, but his, his wife didn't. And she didn't much care for the idea of us doing that, even though she didn't believe in it. And so we were doing it and for about an hour went by. And at that time I was carrying around little chalices of earth and, you know, candles. And it just, you know, I, it just seemed to increase the intensity of, Mm -hmm. uh, of the experience. And for a long time, this thing told me that, you know, it was my guardian angel that it'd give me powers really sucked me into a dark, you know, thing. Wow. And, and, you know, and, and when I began to try to pull away from it, it, it's it really get evil. And, and, you know, it's in this particular session, we're at my friend's house and it keeps spelling window. And, you know, we're looking, we're in the, we're in his living room. And there's a, there's a few windows in the living room. We everybody keeps looking at the window, yeah. And not, you know nothing happens. And finally, it says we were about to give up because that's all it would spell. It was going really slow. But the weird thing was suddenly it very quickly scooted to H E L L O. Totally different, uh, you know, energy mm-hmm. all of a sudden. And so his wife uh, went to the kitchen. Uh, she's rolling her eyes and she just went up the kitchen to get everybody, you know, a beer. And, uh, we heard a scream and some bottles break where I guess she dropped, you know, the bottles and, and she come running in there hysterical saying that there was a strange man looking at her through the window. Oh my God. And so me and my buddy bolted out of the house and sure enough, we saw this guy looked like he was about seven foot tall. Wow. He was bald. And he was wearing uh, what looked to be a hospital gown type thing. Just totally out of place. I mean, yeah. it was crazy. It's and we me, began to give chase. Giving me chills just thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we chased this guy. He was pretty fast, too. Back then, I was playing ball, and I was pretty fast. But this guy, I mean, he had a stride on him. And he was, he was well ahead of us. But we were able to see which way he would turn. He's zigzagging between houses. I mean... We, we never did catch up with him until he run into what I did not know then was what was, was be called uh, Tulsa Behavioral Health Center. This hmm. guy had walked out of that place 